Now, we come to the next part of the call, which is part seven, because I said there are 10 hallmarks of the call. And as I've said, and as Claire reinforced with different language, uh, we are called to someone before something. And so the first call is actually the call to be with Jesus. That is fundamentally the call. Everything else is a commission to walk out of that relationship. Then we looked at the call to holiness, which um, um, Claire unpacked for us in a, in a different angle as well, which is wonderful. And then now we're in the call to the something, to the great commission. And within the story we've been looking at, which is when Jesus called the first disciples, there are 10 hallmarks of the call to um, walk in the great commission. Can we just have those up on the screen? Let's just give ourselves a bit of a reminder. The first one is God calls us at the point where we feel weak and tired. Do I get an amen in the house? Yeah, that's true. Uh, number two, it will require us to go deeper than we did before. You know, Jesus said, now push out into the deep. That is part of one kingdom principle. We're going deeper and deeper with the Lord. Number three, it doesn't always seem to make sense to us. His ways are higher than our ways. Number four, it requires obedience to his word. That's the nevertheless moment. Nevertheless, in spite of what I think I know, in spite of the fact, this is what Simon Peter said, that we've been fishing all night and caught nothing, and that's when professionals fish at night. I'll do it, Lord. And what happened? The nevertheless moment opened up a doorway into point five, which is there is blessing in the call. And number six, the call comes with others. And that leads us to number seven. And let me just read some scripture to us um, in the story. The story is found in John 5, uh, 1 to 10. And we're going to look at a portion in the story in verses 6 to 9. So let me read this now. It'll be on the screen in the room and online it'll be on your screen. And when they had done this, they enclosed a large number of fish. This is the moment, the nevertheless moment, when uh, Jesus said, listen, put your net over the side. And there was a massive amount of fish. And their nets were breaking. They signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both the boats. So they began to sink. That signifies the abundance of God's blessing. But when Simon Peter saw it, listen, he fell down at Jesus' knees saying, depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish they had taken. What is going on in this story? Well, it reveals hallmark number seven, which is this. He reveals himself to us, and we respond in worship to him. You see, the doing bit is always an invitation to know him more. The doing bit is always an opportunity to find out more about him and his character and who he is. And you see, we get to the point in this story, we've done all the other hallmarks, and there is this revelation of, of the fact that Simon Peter was in the presence of the living God and he just... You see, God doesn't need you just to go and do stuff for him. Like, I need my kids to do stuff. Darling, can you empty the dishwasher, please? Or whatever it might be. God doesn't need you to do stuff for him. What he wants is you to walk in the commission so you know him more. And this is what we see in the story. And so I thought, wouldn't it be lovely, as we unpack this hallmark, to have a conversation with our wonderful worship pastor and unpack what worship is all about. So can we welcome our wonderful worship pastor, Eduardo, to the stage. Ah, it's good to have you up here, brother. Wonderful. Wow. Yeah, so good. Got I even water. have a cup of water at first. You even have some water. Of Come course. on. So, so good. Um, what a great story here. Um, you know, we get to this worshipful moment. We get to this moment where Simon Peter becomes really aware of Jesus. Uh, and he just says, you know, he gets on his knees. I mean, he could have said, oh, nice catch. Well done, Jesus. High five. But something else happened. Why do you think that was the case? What was going on? Yeah, and the first thing to notice is that Jesus stood there. He didn't leave, right? That shows like the kindness, the kindness of our Savior. Hmm. But for sure, Peter was like so overcome by the kindness of the Lord, the wisdom, the generosity, the superiority. And then even we see like when even uh, in Matthew uh, chapter 8, 27, when Jesus calms the storm, People ask the same question, like the men, like they, he says, the men were amazing, asked, what kind of man is this? Mm. 
Even the winds and the waves obey him. Like Peter was just over, so overcome by the kindness of the Lord. I feel like that's the first thing that happened. Yeah. And we know that feeling, right? Sometimes we feel so un unworthy, uh, ashamed, and so convicted by things. Um, but that's exactly what Jesus is looking at a disciple. Someone who knows they don't deserve status or power. Mm. I'll repeat that again. Jesus is looking for what Jesus is looking at a disciple is someone who knows they don't deserve status or power. And the first thing that happened there, it was the change of the mind. Interesting, yeah. Which is the Greek word for metanoia, means repentance. And, and then I got a reminder of the uh, Psalm um, 51, verse 12 that says, Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. Wow. How beautiful is that? That's powerful. And then, can I carry on? Please. My Lord. I'm loving it. <laughs> <laughs> the things like the goodness of the Lord leads us into repentance. Amen. Yeah. That's the beauty of, the, of our Jesus. It, that it says that in Romans 2, uh, that the, the goodness of the Lord leads us in re repentance. And I really love the message version that says, in, in kindness, he takes us firmly by hand and lead us into a radical life change. Wow. Radical life change. I love that because, I mean, we see that in this story. There was a radical life change that happened with Simon Peter. Not only did he get a new name in a day of new names, Peter said, you're, you're, Jesus said, you'll be called Peter, Bill yeah. Mike Rock. But he radically changed his life. He went and fished for men. And so I love the way you've unpacked that. Um, and I love the, the point here, which is that the kindness of Jesus was the thing that leads us to change our mind. And, mm. and I think in this, you get a sense, don't you, that Simon is just so astonished yeah. by the goodness yeah. and the kindness of Jesus mm -hmm. with this provision. It's just like, I am in the presence of Almighty God. Okay, let me ask you another, another question. Right? Give it to me. Brother. I'll give it to you. Right, here it is. Now, you are our worship pastor, and we're, yeah. we're blessed to have you as such. Oh. And, you know, um, I love seeing you worship. I get the opportunity to see this man during the week, and he's a worshipful man. He's always worshiping God. Um, but here's the thing. What about when we don't feel like it? Let's be, can we be honest mm. with each other? Like, like, it's almost like, I mean, Simon could have said, well, hey, well done, Jesus. That was really good. Thank you, and move on. Yeah. So how do we worship God? How do we do all the stuff you're talking about when life is tough and we don't feel like it? Yeah, I'd love to address something before that. Um, and the message version says that God is um, kind, but he's not soft. And then Ooh, he- That's interesting. That it leads into that, it, it carries on in that verse that he, in kindness, he takes us firmly by hand and leads us into radical life change. But the second thing that happened there, it was like that was an act of adoration from Peter. In the, in the Hebrew words, it's the word barak, that means to kneel. But when we barak, God, we all offer ourselves to him in a humble, humble submission. Mm. So we, we, that's the thing about like we, you know what, Peter tried their way like, Jesus, you know what, you, don't, you, have, you haven't done this before. But the things like, like Jesus dying in the cross to show us that we can win sin. We have Je victory over sin. We have victory over sin. Yeah, yeah. And then like, like even like even some language, Jesus got attempted to murder someone. That what really means. He, he got, he, that, the, the reason that he died on the cross is to, for, for us to know that like we can do, we can overcome sin. Mm. And then after that posture, when we knew, when we barak, when we also offer ourselves into the Lord, that's when his goodness leads us into repentance and that's just his blessing over us but then I know sometimes we don't feel most of the time to be, if I can be very honest with you I don't feel anything wow okay this is a safe place so you're fine yeah don't worry about the thousands yeah. that watch us online yeah we're in a safe place here but the thing is guys we have tasted we have seen amen. that the Lord is good amen yeah come on and we have enough proves in the Bible, and the Bible is enough, and the cross wow. of the Lord is sufficient for wow. us. Preach it, brother. That will lead us into <laughs> the repentance, adoration, submission. Wow. 
That's powerful. Mm. <laughs> so what you're saying there is that, like, and, and I'm reminded of Romans 12.1, which says, brothers and sisters, Paul says to the church in Rome, in light of God's mercy, in light of the fact that he died for you, that is enough mm. to offer yourselves as a living sacrifice and then he says, that is your act of worship. Yeah. And so our worship isn't about how we feel. It's not about the fact that we've got a good day and, and God's give, it seems like God has given us all we need. It's rooted in the reality of who he is and what he's done for us. Yeah. We got to put God's character in front of our feelings when we come wow. to worship. Wow. Yeah. Okay. And that's quite a challenge. It is. Because it means that we need to surrender. And we don't like to surrender. I don't like mm. to surrender. I mean, we have such negative connotations with the word surrender. That is tough. But God is calling us to surrender. Yeah. And I would say as well, like, even Thanksgiving is the gateway for the throne room. Mm. Even if you're not, you're not feeling anything, start to put Thanksgiving in your mouth. Start being thankful for the Lord. Even for the small thing, Lord, thank you for the air in my lungs. Wow. Because that's enough. Because that means, like, his promises is still yes and amen in our lives. And I really love the, you, you guys all know that Psalm 100 enter his gates with thanksgiving, his court with, with praise. Yeah. But I love the message version that says, enter with the password, thank you. Wow. How beautiful is that? Mm. How beautiful is that? Even like the, there's another worship term that if you can call it. Um, uh, it's a Hebrew word that says yada. The word that invites us to raise hands in thanksgiving. Mm. So how can this help us in worship? I think it's very essential for us to recognize that we are a physical beings and our outward, uh, 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 outward action impact our inward spirit. Can I just pause you on that? That's really interesting because like, we're all different types of people. Some mm. of us are introverts, some of extroverts. Some of us have been brought up where you know, we stand for a song, sit down, stand up for a song. But I think what you're saying is, is more than just uh, how you feel and more than what your upbringing is in terms of a worship environment. There is something powerful about you posturing our bodies in an outward... I mean, I'm reminded of David when he came in front of the ark and they got the ark back from the Palestine and they come into Jerusalem and he's dancing like a crazy man in front of that. Yeah. And, you know, so there is something, isn't there, I guess, about saying, you know what, I'm going to forget about what people think around me. Yeah. I'm going to forget about being inhibited because uh, I'm British and I have a stiff upper lip. And I'm going to put my hands up because there's something powerful about, and symbolic about posturing my body. And that does something to my heart. That's what you're saying, aren't you? Yeah, mm. exactly. And so often we come to this kind of holy gathering, the holy of the saints here, with that... Um, we can call it, it's a corporate um, environment. We are doing this together. But so often we come with our individual um, mindset. Right, yeah. The thing, and then I got a reminder of Psalm 116, verse 13, that says, I will lift up the cup, the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. Guys, salvation is not a private matter. It has to overflow. Wow. So, Even sorry, it, say that again. That's, that's really powerful. Let's listen to this. Say it again. Salvation is not a private matter. It has to overflow. Wow. The question now is like, is your cup overflowing? Wow. Because that will help us, the, our brother and our sister, to worship. Mm. That's interesting. So I think we create an atmosphere of worship around yeah. us, don't we? Yeah. I mean, that's true. If you walk into a room and everyone's going, oh, thank you, Jesus, <laughs> you're like, Wow. But if you walk into a room and people are engaged and they're posturing their worship, mm. not based on how they feel, but who God is, which is what you said earlier, and that there, it changes the atmosphere in the room. I'm reminded of the scripture that says, um, a garment of praise for a spirit of heaviness. That's strong. I can't recall where it is in the, in the Bible. Someone will know. Someone is Googling right now. A garment of praise for a spirit of heaviness. Because oftentimes, I think we feel like this. I'm feeling really heavy, so I'm just going to lie down. God knows. Of course he does. But maybe God is saying, listen, I've got the medicine for you. Because when you praise, it shifts the atmosphere. And what you are doing is you are fixing your eyes on the author and perfecter of your faith, Jesus. And that's what I love about that. Yeah. 
Now, just, just moving on, um, as we think about worship, and worship as, as the Vineyard Movement, and we're proud to be part of the Vineyard Movement, 150 churches in the UK, 2,500 uh, globally, and worship has always been a priority uh, for us. Um, we want to rush into his presence. And we talked about today is a significant day. It's a new name, next chapter, but same story. And uh, we are now uh, Verso Vineyard Church. Um, but we've also got a new name for our worship ministry. It's going to be up on the screen. It's Verso Music. Um, so can you maybe explain to us? Yeah, we've got some whoops in the room. We can be excited. <laughs> What is this all about, Eduardo? Why is this important? What does it mean for us as a body of people here at Verso Vineyard Church? Wow, wow. Um, I feel like the Lord is doing just so much in this church. And I feel like the, um, I feel like our, our job is to steward his presence well. Wow. Instead of, I really want to make us think about this. Um, so, so often we say, uh, welcome the Holy Spirit and all that. But instead, what if we say, let's host his presence well? Let me explain a little bit now. Yeah, that's an interesting point. Go ahead. Yeah. The whole point about it is more about like you making a way for the Lord. Let's say the Lord, just imagine Jesus walking down the aisle. And while he's walking down the aisle, we're casting, casting all the titles all the things, anxiety, depression, everything you put aside. And then when Jesus sits on the throne and he will be like, just bring everything. Wow. I am in the right place right now. Instead of like putting him in front of everything that's going on. Just another thing just to, that we, we can address is, the, is Psalm 23 that says like the, your rod and your staff um, comfort me. They comfort me. And there are two things going on there. That when I was praying for the vineyard music and all of that, which is very exciting. The rod um, is a weapon that the shepherds would have to fight off wolves, lions, and beasts in the wilderness. And the staff is the tool um, used by the shepherd to correct and guide his flock. But there's something really profound there. Let's say we have the shepherd leading. But imagine like the, the, the uh, it says in Psalm 23 that his goodness and his mercy will follow. Just imagine these two words as like the, the dog watch. We have the shepherd, we have the mercy, we have uh, the goodness. And above that, we have the presence guiding us. And it says like, even if you walk through the valley, and that valley doesn't mean like, oh, someone was mean to me, or like, I'm not feeling good, anything like that. Then the, the, the root word for that, like, is something really dark. It's something that is like in your veins, like you can't get out of it. But this, this says like, I will fear no evil. Hmm. Because you have the shepherd leading, we have the dog watch, the mercy and the goodness follow, pursuing you. And we have the presence walking together. So then when I was thinking about the verse of music, I was like, Lord, we want to create places and spaces that, so we can host your presence well in our means. So the invitation is for us all. I really want to ask to, I really want us to be like, instead of being like just an expectator, but like, a, like a, I really want you guys to just participate in worship. We, our cup has to overflow has to overflow. I feel like this is the, the whole meaning around the, the, the why the verse of music, why we are creating this um, name so we can, uh, it's like to steward the presence of the Lord well. I feel like this is pretty much all that. I, you know, I really love that because I think there's an interesting distinction, which is we often say, come Holy Spirit. And I think that is a wonderful thing for us to want to be intentional being in his presence. Mm -hmm. But I think sometimes we can think that he's sitting there thinking, I'll only come when you ask me to come. Uh, but we need to be aware sometimes that his presence is with us always. And I think what's interesting in this story with, with Simon Peter in the boat is that it wasn't, he didn't worship because he said, okay, Jesus, can you come into my boat now? He was aware all of a sudden of the presence of Jesus. Yeah. And I think oftentimes we forget that he is with us and it's about, Lord, would you make me aware of your presence right now? 
There's something powerful in that. And I like what you talked about hosting his presence, which is about saying, I recognize that he is on the throne and I'm gonna cast my crowns and my titles and I'm gonna cast everything and I'm gonna get on my knees in front of him. And that's what, we, that's what we mean when we say host his presence well, which is recognize that God is here and that we need to respond in worship. Yeah, in the Hebrew um, chapter four says, um, for the word of God is living and active. Mm. Guys, we don't serve a passive God. And we got to, as, as his people, we got to respond to that. Yeah. Not, not only here, not only here, but in like a work, workplace, universities, college, yeah. even the way you, son and daughter, you treat your parents, all of that. Yeah, that's absolutely It's the right. whole package. Yeah, I love that. So with Mercy Music, our mission, Jesus is our ultimate goal, and we long to create spaces to host his presence. Well. Powerful. I mean, that's our heart here. Our heart, our ultimate goal is about people encountering Jesus. It's about us encountering Jesus. It starts with us first. And we want to create spaces to host his presence well. So who are we then? Who, what, what is Verso Music then? Let me to read it. Yeah, man. I don't know if you can read <laughs> I, it from there. I can't see. Have you got it here? You can turn around and look on the screen. <laughs> um, Verso Music um, is the minister of Verso Vineyard Church that promotes and stewards the manifestation and creation of worship out of our encounters with Jesus. Wow. That's powerful. This is who we are. Yeah. Uh, you know, I absolutely love that because there is an intentionality that we have here as a church mm. to steward those encounters well and create songs that people can sing and encounter Jesus. You know, God has given us so much here as a church and he continues to give us more and more. And it's so, t- isn't it the temptation, let's just have a holy huddle on a Sunday and enjoy the worship here. But God is calling us to steward those moments and the songs that are coming so that we can bless people around us and people can encounter Jesus. And so Verso Music is going to be the vehicle in which we will be blessing the broader body of Christ with new songs, new music. Uh, And I'm really excited about the future there for Verso Music. Very exciting. Yeah. So we spent some time talking. Let me try and maybe sum up for us. Um, You see, what we're seeing here is that the invitation of Jesus on the Great Commission isn't about I need you to do stuff. It's all about an invitation to encounter him in that moment. And we look to that, you look at through all the other hallmarks, it's all about a revelation of who God is, an opportunity for us to know him more. And we get to the hallmark where there has to be a response in our hearts to that revelation. And there is this powerful illustration with Simon that he gets on his knees And all of a sudden, he realizes not just who God is, but who he is. What we see here is a moment of humility and saying, I am not God. (laughs) In fact, please get away from me. You are holy. It reminds me of Isaiah. When he he experiences God and he says, I have disintegrated. That's modern vernacular to say, I am undone. There is a revelation and it causes us to surrender all. But you know what Jesus says? Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. And I think that's the invitation for us this morning, which is this. Do we really want to encounter the living God? Do you really want to encounter the presence of God? Because if your answer is yes, it demands a response from us, which is worship and surrender. Not based on how we feel, not based on our circumstances, but based on the truth of who he is and who we are. Eduardo, thank you for unpacking that with us. Uh, Yeah, let's encourage you. You're welcome. 